Welcome back inside the Powell Athletic Center. Matt Payton, Benji Kelly here with you as we get set for women's action. Should be a fun one here on the women's side. The College of the Ozarks, the Lady Bobcats making the trip up from Point Lookout, Missouri. Been and, there. Uh, Beautiful been campus. Point Lookout? Yeah. yeah, you said you had an event with Be uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Hominy. He celebrated his 90th birthday, and he was good friends with the president there, former president, Jerry Davis, and beautiful campus um just uh it, you know at a great part of the state of missouri and uh i'll tell you what they're they it's one of those that if you're ever out that way you want to you want to stop by and see it the uh, lady tigers interplay 25 and one on the season mid-south conference regular season champs college of the ozarks and coach becky mullis out of the independent ranks 21 and six and Benji, I did a little digging. I couldn't find a whole lot of, uh, in terms of how they do the, the independent stuff and, and who actually is a fellow independent. I looked on the NAI uh, stat program, and, and those shift um, quite frequently. I did find one place that they were 7-2 and two in independent games. They, ha they have a tournament right. soon. They do. So kind of hard to find information there. But, you know, here's one thing that you can look at. They were the NCCAA Division One National Champion. Uh, a year ago. Yes. So Coach Mullis has done a terrific job. They lost to Indiana Wesleyan on the road in, in Marion, Indiana, uh, 89 to 79 this season. So a 10 point loss there. And, and we, all, we all know the Wildcats came here and gave Campbellsville their only loss of the season. So uh, this this College of the Ozarks team, uh, no slouch. I no, think you could absolutely. Say. Twenty-one and six, and on the verge of, uh, you know, they got to uh, be a national tournament I team. I right? think I think so. You know, it, we they always usually the gold standards. If you can get to twenty wins, usually you know that's a full, that's a good body of work for the year. Now, obviously, they can automatically get in by winning that independent tournament. But if not, I still think they're going to be an at-large team. And, and a pretty good at-large team. So, and I think next year they join a league. They do. Uh, they do. I believe so. This is it the American Midwest? I forget who. I can't. I'll have to double check. But next year they do join uh, a conference, so they'll they'll kind of have a place to to go uh, in regards to uh, a conference next season. And uh, again, Coach Mullis and her crew staying up an extra day. It's a long trip back. It I'm is a long it's about trip. About eight or nine hours. Yeah, it's back, a haul. It's a haul, man. Down. So uh, certainly wish them safe travels at the conclusion of this game. And we do anticipate this game will start early. I know we're at 1:43 on the clock uh, uh, local time, but uh, this game will start early as both uh, the Carolina Christian Club stayed at a little extra. Um, College of the Ozarks trying to get out of here. So. 10 to 20 minutes might make all the difference in uh, well, uh, getting back home. Yeah, and, you think about it because they've got classes in the morning. Yeah, so, um, so going to be a, exactly long, right. a long day for those. That one thing, they'll get an hour back going to the central time zone. They so will. that will help uh, a bit. But anyway, they are 21 and 6 on the season, averaging uh, nearly 80 points per basketball game. The Lady Tigers at uh, nearly 87 points a game, 25 and 1 on the year. Campbellsville will be in action next Sunday. So a week from today, this kind of works like a tune-up maybe in terms yep. of uh, your game time a week from now as Campbellsville will take on the winner of the 4-5 matchup, which will be Lindsey Wilson College and Freed Hardeman. So yesterday on the women's side, it got kind of crazy. Not crazy, but interesting, I'll say. Uh, Cumberland's got a win. They moved up to the two seed with point differential over Georgetown. Georgetown the three seed. So Cumberland's will take on Bethel. And then uh, you've got Georgetown meeting up with Cumberland University. Then Lindsey Wilson kind of steals. They come from behind. Freed have been in front of them all season long in conference uh, standings. And Lindsey Wilson kind of comes back late and steals that four seed from Freed Hardeman with the uh, uh, the win yesterday, a pair of wins over the yeah. Freed Hardeman Lions for Coach Weddington's club. And, and here's the thing about that. Finishing fourth in the conference, that helps you in terms of, uh, you know, national rankings and two when it comes to the – you know the at-large bids and stuff so uh you got to get credit lindsey they they actually had freed's number twice this year and uh, they got to turn right around and play him again in, in, a, in, in less than a week and so lindsey wilson would be 18 and 10 freed hardeman 19 and 9 overall so i think both of those two uh should be in the national I tournament agree. pretty safely and uh, I don't know that, that Cumberland U with that losing record can get there, but if you told me in a few days that they somehow won the conference tournament, I wouldn't just be blown over uh, by exactly. that. Coach Bloom's club plays hard. They've played uh, for him all the way down to the wire. And, uh, you know, you can't sleep. Kayla Gordon and Lindsey yeah, Freeman no. and some of those kids can certainly uh, knock off anybody in the uh, conference tournament uh, with the opportunity. So uh, the two teams here on the floor are just over a minute before the clock winds down. We'll go to Corbin Harris momentarily.
for our starting lineups here on Senior Day and the Lady Tigers. Uh, Benji, normally don't rock the boat. I don't know if uh, Coach Ginger Eichhofer will make any adjustments to that starting lineup. It's been pretty, uh, it's been pretty good to her over the last few years. Yeah, I think as, in, in uh, years past she she hasn't made that change. Yeah. So she, uh, I think she'll stick to her guns. And uh, Campbellsville has ran out that same starting lineup. Um, over 50 plus times in the last two seasons. The only times they haven't were with the Bailey Pedigo injury mid-year yep. this season. Bailey was hurt. She missed that Indiana Wesleyan game, and uh, the Lady Tigers had to make some adjustments there for a short period, but uh, pretty consistent is Campbellsville University and this starting five. For College of the Ozarks, the, uh, the their leading scorer on the season is Kaylee Frank, the daughter of their assistant coach, Steve Frank, who put together a an unbelievable resume uh, as a high school coach. But uh, Kaylee Frank at 18 points a game. The Lady Tigers will have their work cut out for them, stopping the senior guard from Stratford, Missouri, as uh, Corbin Harris is ready for the starting lineup, says the buzzer will bark here well, in just are, are a moment. We doing oh, the, we're doing the 1,000 point it. balls. Yeah. I had totally forgotten about this, so we'll get a shot of uh, the uh, the 1,000 point balls here as Maddie Boyle as a collegiate, Lauren Lee as a Lady Tiger, and we, we got to blame the stats programs on some of that. And uh, the Lady Tigers are looking for the anthem, but I don't think we're going to do the anthem again. Oh, we are. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do this again. Let's uh, step away for a quick timeout, and we'll be right back on the CU Sports Network. get back a little early in the uh, PAL here. We had the little confusion, but uh, here, Maddie Boyle getting her 1,000 point ball as a collegiate. She scored uh, over 900 here as a Campbellsville University Lady Tiger. 100 at uh, Kentucky Wesleyan before transferring. And I know, Benji, we're all hopeful that there's uh, nine games left for this Lady Tiger team and a chance Absolutely. for her to get another of those balls as just a Lady Tiger and Lauren Lee walks out she picked up her 1000 point against freed hardeman uh, i went back I, I still didn't get to double check but there's a possibility that her 1000 point was on the go-ahead shot i think it was against Matt. the lions uh, down there and how cool is that they trailed for 35 minutes lee hit a free throw line jumper at 423 and that may have very well been her 1000 point the uh, stat program kind of let us down a little bit but uh, anyway we'll blame them more and more on that and so let's head down to Corbin Harris he'll get us uh, the starting lineup for the uh, well College of the Ozarks I'll come over them here in a moment but we want to mainly get him for the Lady Tiger starting lineup here in just a moment so uh, down to public address announcer here at the Powell Center Corbin Harris for Campbellsville starting by And now the starting lineup for your Campbellsville Lady Tigers. At guard, a 5'9 graduate senior from Glasgow, Kentucky, number four, Bailey Pedigo. At guard, a 5'7 grad from Liberty, Kentucky, number five, Lauren Lee. At guard, a 5'6 graduate senior from Millersville, Kentucky, number 15, Maddie Boyle. At forward, a 5'8 graduate student from Burstown, Kentucky, number 32, Courtney Pritchett. And at forward, a 6'2 graduate student from Stanford, Kentucky, number 33, Caitlin Wilkes. 
Council's coached by assistants Brett Sal and Miranda Denny. And in her 17th year as head coach, Ginger High Colvin. Set to begin this basketball game, Campbellsville University in the road, uh, or the home grace in the, uh, the ash gray uniforms. Campbellsville across the chest in maroon, maroon numerals. For College of the Ozarks, they'll send out Taylor Rush. She's a 5'7 sophomore guard from Batesville, Arkansas. Susie Moran, six foot, a sophomore forward from White House, Texas. Blythe Benningfield, 5'11, the junior guard from Paragold, Arkansas. Logan Jones, 5'8, a freshman guard from Mansville, Missouri, as Boyle will jump it up with Moran and she'll easily win the toss. Kaylee Frank, she's a 5'7 senior from Stratford, Missouri. Campbellsville in their patented extended zone here as Benefield goes down to the end line. Moran inside ball deflected. Pedigo got a piece of it, but inside Benefield able to stay with it, and Benningfield will get the uh, Benefield. Uh, I'm going to have to check the pronunciation on that to be sure. That's a Around here, we get Benningfield a lot. Here is Boyle. She's free for three, and that is off the mark. Rebound knocked away from Moran and picked up by Rush. Inside. They've got Frank. She spins, looks down inside. Moran going to go to work back out. Ball deflected by Pedigo. Lee and Frank collide. The foul will go against Frank. And Kaylee Frank has picked up the first foul in the basketball game here. Good, do good job defensively there for Campbellsville. Kind of double teaming down on the post and getting a turnover. Scoreboard on the video shows 2-1. to one. It's 2-0. Oh. Now they've corrected that as soon as I mentioned it. This ball knocked out of bounds. Wilkes. Lauren Lee will trigger it in here. Pedigo has it. Bailey will drop it off. Lee circles left side. Cut off. Defended by Jones. Campbellsville down to eight seconds. Pritchett holds with a ball fake back out. Here's Bailey at the elbow jumper on the way. No good. And the rebound taken in by Moran. Quickly, they've got Rush. Now Frank holds. Boyle flies at Frank into the corner. Driving on the end line is Benefield. Back out. And maybe a walk. No call as the crowd near the Powell Center voice their displeasure with that. In line, Moran. Inside cutting Frank over Pedigo. Two points for Kaylee. Frank Bailey tried to take the contact there, Benji, but she was in the restricted circle. Anyhow. Yeah, restricted circle and uh, kind of a play on, but you got to be impressed with this Ozarks team and how they're moving the ball on the offensive end against that zone. Pritchett at the free throw line. She's a little under the weather today. Bounces. Wilkes going to go to work against Moran. That shot too strong. Benningfield hits it. It goes out of play, but they're actually going to say that Pedigo got a piece of it as well. So four to nothing the score, and Ozarks gets it back here. We've played about two minutes. Long pass. Pedigo read it, but it was high enough she couldn't quite get to it. And yep. right on the line, Jones was a little back and forth, and the freshman will be hit with the turnover call. Yeah, good defense there by Pedigo to force that. She she caught it, stepped over, and then stepped back in. So once again, it's both feet and the ball in the front court. Pritchett, free throw line, jumper on the way. Good for yeah, Courtney Swish it. Maybe it's her flu game here, Matt, to well, see some big, some big numbers here from the from the. The senior. Sign me up. Long pass from Jones. Benefield. One dribble. Now Frank. She'll take the jumper. That's good for Kaylee Frank from about eight feet. Yeah, this Ozark team come to play, Matt. Six to two here. Really good ball club. Pritchett, elbow jumper. Similar spot. That's similar good. result. She knocks it down. Six yeah. to four. Go ahead and have an afternoon, young Absolutely. lady. Absolutely. Her 148th game for Campbellsville University is a turnover. The uh, Ozarks give it away as Rush, her long pass goes out of bounds, but Pritchett has played more games than anybody. Only Bailey Pedigo can say she's won as many games as Courtney Pritchett as those two will head out of here. The leaders in that column. Wilkes out, Pritchett, now Pedigo. She'll take the jumper. The southpaw shot is good. We're tied at six, so it is Pritchett and Pedigo doing the heavy lifting on the scoreboard for Campbellsville early. Quite fitting, I would think. Absolutely, and you think that uh, this Ozark team has scouted Wilkes, but uh, they were kind of sagged off Pritchett a couple times, and she knocked down the shot. That time, she was able to find Pedigo in the corner. Jones with the basketball, bounces. Nice job by Rush to come across. Benefield in the corner. 
Back out top. Jones runs into her own teammate, has to give it up. Like Benefield will try the three, and that is good. Averaging just under nine points a ball game. Fast start for her. Yeah, let's serve. Four of four from the field, Matt. Pritch it off the Wilkes screen. Wilkes rolls, but not there. Now Pedigo wants to drive in line, cross the lane to Lee. Out, shooter is Boyle. Triple. Bang! Addie Boyle knocks it up. Nine apiece here in the Powell Center. Yep. Anything you can do was it I can do better, so uh, right. nine to nine. Inside, Moran working, shovels it. Benefield underneath, contested shot is good. 5'11", Benefield has uh, had a terrific start here. She's got at least seven. 11 to nine, Campbellsville leads, or excuse me, Campbellsville trails by two. Pritchett holds, now Pedigo works again down the end line, cut off, needs help, bounces, Wilkes couldn't catch it. Turnover. Campbellsville will see Benefield come the other end. She'll leave it left side of the lane. Offensive foul. She runs over Lauren Lee. Did a nice job for CU. And that'll be the first on the Ozarks as Campbellsville will make a check. Check that. That is uh, that's two on the Ozarks because Frank had one earlier on the rebound attempt. So uh, two on the Ozarks. Campbellsville will send Whitney Hay into the lineup as Bailey Pedigo checks out. Hey, the six-foot redshirt sophomore forward from Eastview, Kentucky. Pritchett inside, cutting. Boyle, she'll throw up a shot, won't stick. Ball batted, uh, batted around, and you've got a host of players out there trying to grab it. Finally, Frank able to collect for the Ozarks. Jones has it knocked away, but stays with it. Now Rush. Jones in the middle, and she couldn't handle the pass. Pritchett picks it up, two on one. Boyle will go down right side of the lane. One dribble and lay it in. Maddie Boyle gets another hoop. Tied at 11. Yeah, good job there defensively. Right, right to Pritchett. Oh, and Lee almost got one there, but. Uh... In the middle, Moran on down. Frank shot over Pritchett before Courtney could get there to defend. And Ozarks with a 13 to 11 advantage. Well, you got to think here, they're going to miss for too long, Matt. Six of six already, this Ozarks team. Pritchett holds, gets the screen from Wilkes. And now they'll use Hay left side. Hay going to deck it behind the back. Working, stops. Pritchett open. Three, no good. Rebound taken in by Jones. And Ozarks will come back the other way now. Lee will pressure a bit. Left side rush. Moran, Jones, now Bennyfield, Frank, all five Bobcats have touched it. Free throw line jumper for Moran off the mark. Well, you mentioned they needed a miss or were due for one. There it is. Here's lead the other way. Is Frank a bit slow getting up? And trailer, Wilkes, three on the way. That is too strong. Jones runs down the board. And here's Bennyfield. Ran on inside straight line. That ball go out of bounds or was it a contact? Out of, bounds. out of bounds. So a turnover on Ozarks. Changes for Campbellsville at this media stoppage as the Lady Tigers will send in three new players. So we'll step away, take a timeout. We'll come back and discuss the changes in a moment. 325 on the game clock. First quarter, Campbellsville trails by two on the CU Sports Network. to 11 Campbellsville trailing Ozarks here early in the Powell Center 325 to play Maddie Boyle knocking in an Edward Jones triple a moment ago all 13 points for Ozarks have come from Blythe Benefield and uh, Kaylee Frank here in the early going well, they're shooting the ball extremely well six of seven to start the game Lee a little hesitation gets some separation throws up a shot won't stick 
And Kayla Luby, one of those new players in the lineup, couldn't get the putback. Flowers spills to the ground. And racing ahead is Abby Linville. Linville for Ozarks checking in. She's got Jones in the corner, three no good. As Hay and Bertram collide, Hay goes to the ground. Grimace is a bit getting up. But for Campbellsville, you, I mentioned Flowers, 5'10", sophomore forward from Winchester, Kentucky. Elizabeth Bertram, 5'6", the junior guard from Glasgow, Kentucky. And also Kayla Luby, 6'2", the graduate forward from B, Nebraska. Luby, the intended target there, couldn't handle it. Benefield stepped on the end line. Oh, we're going to have a foul called against Whitney Hay on the play. And that will be the first on Campbellsville, first on Hay. Lauren Lee checks out. Bailey Pettigo back in. I mentioned Abby Linville, who checked in a moment ago for Ozarks, 5'4", junior guard from Fox, Arkansas. It was Rush who left the lineup for the Ozarks. Looking inside, they've got Benefield. Cutting is Frank. Frank greeted there by Flowers, and she's going to be called for steps. Yeah, one, one little extra step there, and uh, Campbellsville with a turnover there. That's the... Beautiful thing about that defense, Matt, is how they speed teams up, and that time, Kimsville was able to turn them over. Hay on the left wing. Inside, they've got Luby, beautiful pass. Kayla Luby gets the hoop, and Whitney Hay the helper, and that is a dime from Hay right on the yeah. hands of Luby. Good basketball. They'll come back near side right in front of us to Lindale. Long pass will go over the head of the intended target and out of bounds. So a turnover on Ozarks. They've shot eight. it. Yeah, they've shot it well, but it's the turnovers right now that are starting to mount. Starting to mount up, and then you combine that or combine that with uh, missed shots that hopefully Camels will get on a little run here. Tied at 13, less than two minutes to play in the first quarter. Hay holds off the elbow, can go opposite the screen. Nice defense by Benefield, and the shot comes up well short. Moran the rebound. Nice job by Moran not to panic, just kind of waited and then everything cleared out. Jones, far side. Now Linville, back to Jones in the wing. In line, working Frank, stepped on the in line, and another turnover on Ozarks on the season. They average about 15 a game, and at this pace, they're gonna fly by that quickly. Yeah, number nine, and once again, good defensive pressure there for Campbellsville. Right side, Pettigo bounces to Bertram, back door, and that is not there, a little too far, and Pettigo will back away with it. Pettigo uses Hay. Hay gonna drive in, traffic, ball knocked away, she stays with it, elbow jumper on the way, banked it in, Whitney Hay. Banks aren't open on Sunday, young lady, but... Uh, well, we've seen a couple here this afternoon. She made a <laughs> two-point withdrawal there. That's all right. At the end of the day, it's a bucket. 15 to 13, is that their first lead, Benji? It is. Campbellsville up by two. Jones has it deflected, but it gets to Moran. Skip pass, Linville out. Jones is open. She'll try the three. That is good for Logan Jones. Logan and Lauren Jones both on the roster. I didn't confirm that they were related, but one might think as freshmen in same hometown, same high school. Flowers. Left side, Hay again. She'll work against Benefield across the line, kicks it out. Pettigo straight away, three on the way. Bang, Bailey Pettigo with less than 20 seconds remaining in the period puts Campbellville back up two. They trade threes, Jones and Pettigo do. 18 to 16 the score. Bouncing, collecting is Moran, and she's gonna be called for an offensive foul with six tenths of a second left, so. Not sure Campbellsville can get much done, well, but they it, do come up with a stop. Well, they do, and, and once again, it's not like you you're uh, you get you get the ball to start the second quarter. So uh, just to inbound it there, and uh, good first quarter, both teams. Campbellsville will head to the second quarter, leading by two and a high-scoring first quarter of action. We'll step away, take a timeout, and come right back. You're following Lady Tiger basketball on Campbellsville University Sports Network.
18 to 16, Campbellsville the advantage. The Lady Tigers rewarded by Bailey Pettigo a moment ago on that Edward Jones three. And Whitney Hay has uh, made a couple of really nice passes. And that's one thing from her, especially going into next year, Benji, we expect to see more of. Her yes. ability to create for teammates is terrific. It, it's terrific. And uh, you, you got to, uh, you know, I think the last two or three games, she's kind of. Uh, I won't say calm down, but settle down and allow the game to come to her. And, and she's so much more uh, efficient when she does that. And that was just a great example there as well. Campbellsville will have the basketball to begin this second quarter. Again, they are going from right to left in this first half. Flowers on the right wing. Nally, here's Pedigo, and we get a whistle here. We're going to have a foul on Tyra Flowers yep. is, uh, coming through. Coming through a little aggressive there, a little body, body, body check. Bertram will hug up on Rush, who's back in there, and force her to give it back to Linville. Linville will come right side to Rush. Lady Tigers have sent Maddie Nally into the lineup, the 6'2 junior forward from Louisville, Kentucky. Another turnover for the Ozarks. Pedigo will slow down off the left wing. Nally inside, Luby rolling. She gets the hoop. And Maddie Nally with that helper. Yeah, just good, uh, good patient basketball there. Pedigo pulls it out. We're able to get an entry pass down into Luby. Kiara Mattingly into the lineup for Ozarks. 5'11 freshman guard from Archie, Missouri. Looking for Mattingly yep. down in the corner, and that ball is thrown out of bounds. Yeah, turnover number 10, or actually number 12. So they're only three away from their, their season average. Something that Campbellsville is so good at, turning teams over, Matt. 20 to 16, the Lady Tigers a four-point advantage. Thanks for joining us today on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Matt Payton and Benji Kelly with you for this women's game, the second half of this doubleheader inside Bertram again. Luby going to town. Deuce for Luby, the dime for Bertram. And Taylor yeah. Luby with a nice couple of baskets. Yeah, just a good basketball right there, being patient. Linville right in front of the end of the Lady Tiger bench goes back off the rush. This Campbellsville defense has picked it up a notch. Yes, Linville has to sky to grab it. In line, Mattingly skips it left side rush. She gets around Pedigo to throw up the three, and here the two players collide. They're going to call a foul on Flowers. Yeah. Just a little incidental contact in my view, but... Uh, She did body check her. Well, there was a body check, but it was, uh, they were both going for a loose ball out there. That's 22-16, uh, Pritchett will check back in. Frustrating couple of minutes there for Flowers. Ozark's back to work. Frank going to deck it, drives, gets a little separation. Man, smooth right there for Kaylee Frank. Well, that's why you see her 18.3 18 a game. She can create her. Own shot, he's being very aggressive here tonight. Left side, Nally catches. Pritchett, elbow, going to deck it. Back out to Nally, into the corner. Bertram again feeds Luby, and those awkward angles coming in handy. I don't know how they teach geometry in Nebraska, but uh, Kayla Luby figured it out at a well, young age. Well, i tell you, she really has. She's been spectacular pickup for this Lady Tiger team, a transfer a couple years ago. Inside, nice pass there from Rush. Finds an open Moran. An easy lay-in. The two teams go back and forth here. 24 to 20. Campbellsville with a four-point edge. Pedigo on the dribble. Has Pritchett. There's the feed. Luby again. <laughs> she is going to work. Let's do it. Let's, I mean, you know, it's one of those things, Matt, that uh, when you get a player that's hot like that, you just keep, keep feeding her. Kayla Luby. Transfer from Concordia. Averaging 12 points off the bench this year for Campbellsville. And this ball taken away. Frank ran into Pritchett. And Nally tried to grab it. And I think it must have hit off Frank. Nally must have kind of whiffed as she tried to get her hands on it. 26 to 20. The Lady Tigers have the basketball and a chance to add to their lead here. Lauren Lee back in. Maddie Boyle re-enters for CU. Lee out front, Boyle. 
Chris Pritchard at the elbow. A little double team as they sag down. It frees up Bertram. Three. Bang. Elizabeth Bertram makes him pay with an Edward Jones trip. I tell you what, Matt, that's the beautiful thing about post play. When you get a, a player that's hot like that, then they're going to make adjustments, and that just leaves a three-point line wide open. Linville kind of sagged in yes. there and trying to help out. The Lady Tigers went into the corner, and Bertram hit the triple. Moran front of the lane, missed the shot, hits the front of the iron. Luby shovels the rebound off to Lee. Lee ahead, right side of the lane, hesitates. She's fouled there. And this will send Lauren Lee to the free throw line as Blythe Benningfield picks up her second well, once again, just some beautiful basketball here for this Lady Tiger team. So uh, Campbellsville with a nine-point advantage, sending Lauren Lee, the reigning conference player of the week, to the line. 1,000-point score hits the first free throw. Second free throw, good for Lauren Lee. 31 to 20, the Lady Tigers have started to create a little separation. Linville bounces, and here we get a whistle that will go against Courtney Pritchett. So that will be the first on Pritchett, three on Campbellsville as a team. Jones back in, that is uh, Logan Jones. Changes coming for Campbellsville as we get Wilkes and Nally to enter. Sarah Sutton will check in for the first time today as well, the 5'10 senior from Scottsville, Kentucky. Orrin Lee, Kayla Luby, and Courtney Pritchett check out. Maddie Boyle will handle the point duties for CU at the moment, I would think, as Linville is open for three. That one in and out. Caroms off. Benefield the rebound. She'll have Jones just outside the lane, about five or six feet, and somebody's got to help Boyle again. No Lee, no Pettigo. Boyle will handle it, but somebody has to stay back and either yeah, inbound. Yeah, I, I don't think they wanted Lee to come out of the game. Oh, did so, they? Yeah, because she was like, what are you doing? <laughs> so immediately she's already got her back here to the scores table to get in. Allie will use Sutton. She's open, three on the way, no good. Rebound to Moran. She and Nally collide. We'll go to the arrow. It's a rather quick whistle. Yeah, it is a quick whistle. Let it play through, but... Uh, Ball going to the Ozarks. This with Bertram checks out and she gets a hearty round of applause from the crowd and even the head coach there is applauding her effort. Jones stops on the right wing in a trap. Ball deflected. Frank there to pick it up and she's called for steps. Tried to throw on the brakes, but too much momentum. And another giveaway on the Ozarks. 14th turnover, Matt. So here in this first half, Campbellsville has got them on their season average. Lee right side, bounces to Nally. Nally wanted that back door cut, not there. Sutton gonna pop, no. Instead, Lee circling. Back to Lee, handoff from Wilkes. There's Boyle off the screen, triple on the way. Bang, right it down, Maddie Boyle, another Edward Jones three. That's just a beautiful offensive set right there. You know, it's, it's a design play to get Boyle the ball. And uh, more times than not, she's knocking it down. She's got to see if she can catch Billy Bob with five. Well, today. there you go. Right wing in the corner. This is Benefield for three, and that is good. These two teams continue to win. One hits from deep. The other one's going to come down and knock one in as well. 34-25, the score. Well, you, this is a feeling of an NAI national tournament the, game this right This Ozarks here. team, Absolutely. they belong. They, they I don't belong. need to see the next, I don't I don't need to see the next 24 minutes. They're a national tournament they team. They are. Out top, Lee. Left side, Boyle again. Three, no good. Long board to Linville. She'll grab it and try to stay out of the way of some of the Lady Tigers. Benefield kicks. Frank, Linville nearly mishandled it into the corner. Ozarks looking. Frank has it between defenders. Shovels one up. We're going to have a foul on the floor. Now we'll go against Maddie Nally. You need the blue one. No, I'm you did with the if, if you've already used I've the already used the Marine. Oh, yep. That's 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 what we do. So Whitney the, Hay will Who was that foul on? Nally. Nally, okay. Hay checks in for Maddie Nally and Caitlin Wilkes will exit as Kayla Luby re enters. 
And this with 408 on the clock brings us to a media stoppage here. So we will step away as well. The Lady Tigers lead by eight. Again, 408 showing on the clock here first half. You're following Lady Tiger basketball on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Thirty-four twenty-six, Campbellsville leads Ozarks here in this non-conference matchup. Final regular season game for both of these two teams. Ozarks making the trip up from Point Lookout, Missouri. They call the Keeter Gym home there in Point they Lookout. Do. Keeter Center, another big uh, kind of alumni center as well. And I tell you what, they make their own ice cream there, and it is excellent. And I think Matt, don't I know you, tempt me with a good time. Well, I'll tell you, you, you like you like some popcorn too. Oh, so I can they, smell it. Today. Uh, yeah, they it's, got it's popcorn good. in there. Oh yeah. I partook in some yesterday. Frank catches the inbound. Jumper just off the lane there. No good. Rebound to Luby. She'll wait. Finds Lee. Sprints ahead. Lee head down all the way to the rim. And one off the window for Lauren Lee. Unreal. How many times have we seen that? Lauren Lee get to the rim, draws a little contact, or well, actually a lot of contact, and is able to finish and go to the free throw line. Wow. Boyle jammed her finger, it looked like, and she'll check uh, out. She'll be all right. Put a little tape on it. Some of Jeremy Boyle's cinnamon candy will fix that. There, that, is, that is actually right. Good crowd here on hand. Is the score good. right? Should be 37 to 26. Lindell. There they go. They get it right. Oh, Burt stumbled down. She's okay. Benefield looking to work in line. Needs some help. Turns it over. Kind of got herself into a bad spot. Jumped into the air. Nowhere to go with it. Lee again. Middle of the lane. Shot pops off. Hey, the rebound. And that's just your Lindell listed yeah. at 5'4". And there's the six foot Whitney Hay on your backside to take it out of your arms. Absolutely. Put and once again, that's good basketball for Whitney to trail like that. Another turnover. Lee again pushes the action, steps on a foot and goes down. Lauren Lee having herself an evening. That foul will go against Linville. Her first three on Ozarks. Lee had 12 points in the win over Georgetown. She's well on her way to double figures today as well. That free throw no good as uh, Campbellsville with a 13-point advantage. Maddie Nally will check back in. Free throw number two is good for the valedictorian, Lauren Lee. The Lady Tigers lose everything out of their starting lineup, plus Luby, plus Sutton, but uh, got the point guard coming back. That's, that's saying something right there. That's going to help a lot. Lee knocks it. Away briefly, but Jones stays with it. Bertram there to help out. Now Frank goes into the corner. Linville catches. Nally had checked in for Pritchett. This ball goes out of play. It'll stay with Ozarks. Ozarks inbound. Linville catches. Three minutes to play in the half. Left side, Benefield. Frank. Knocked away by Bertram on the deck. It's a scrum. Luby picked it up. Hay wants to run. Hay inside for Nally. He comes across the lane with the catch. Now Hay nice. free throw line inside. Luby can't finish. Luby gets her own miss. Bertram open. South Paul's triple. Bang! Elizabeth Bertram with an Edward Jones payout once again. She's got two today. 43-26, the Lady Tigers have opened up a 17-point advantage here on Senior Day in the Powell Center. 2.33 remaining on the clock, and Benji That's some good basketball. It was, I don't know if slow start's the right word. They went kind of back and forth, but really 
the Lady Tigers picked up the shooting, and again, we you can't you can't tell the tale of this game without the turnovers because you look down at the stat sheet: 17 turnovers, 26 points off of. Yeah, and, and once again, this this Ozarks team they're a really great team. They started the game seven for seven, so that's why it was so close there a little early. But now Campbellsville has been able to get some stops. Um, they've been able to turn them over, take advantage off those turnovers. Uh, since that seven to seven, they've gone four of ten. So their shooting percentages drop way down. They're still shooting 64% for the game, but uh, Campbellsville's just really kind of turned it on uh, on the offensive end and uh, knocked down five three-pointers off those turnovers and uh, just playing extremely well right now. But you can't you can't take the the foot off the throttle here against this team. They're too good. Frank, left side three. That is good. So. I'm telling you, Benji, when they get the looks, it's That's, the turnover. So if it they is. don't turn it over, this game, is, is, this game is much different. In the pocket. Yep. Ozarks 24th in the country in points per game, so that is not an issue for them. As here we get steps called, Bertram with the catch, shuffle the feet. Bailey will check back in for CU, and Lauren Lee will get a breather here for Lady Tigers. Do they call? Okay, so do they call the the independent, is it Continental Athletic? It may be. So maybe that's where my mistake came earlier when I was doing my research. I don't guess I realized that. That may be where I need to uh, look here as Frank underhands one and gets it back. That one was deflected. She got it back, and we get a whistle here as Campbellsville will be assessed a personal foul. Maddie Nally, the culprit, and she will pick up her second five on Campbellsville as a team. 150 remaining in the half. This free throw hard. Don't forget Senior Day festivities for the Tigers and the Lady Tiger. Uh, the Tigers, the cheer team will have their Senior Day as well. The Lady Tigers will come at the conclusion of the ball game, so stay with us after the game for that. The free throw is good for Frank. And Campbellsville back the other way. Inside, ball knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with CU. So Frank just got one of the two, didn't she? Is that uh, making some sense there? That's a lot of familiar names. Yeah, it is. I see Florida National and some of those. So they, they go to Kansas to play their, uh, of course, this is last year's um, tournament um, at the Championship Central. But, yeah, that they've. Okay, so that. I that was that explains it. So I was too, and yes. I noticed that it wasn't there, so that, that makes sense. Inside Luby, and Luby looking for a an open Bertram, but as Pedigo went through, her defender did as well and found herself in the passing lane. This shot in the middle of the lane for Moran, no good. Rebound to Hay. Hay wants to run. Lady Tigers up by a Baker's dozen. Hay right side, shovels it back. Bert for the trifecta. She said that was off as soon as she let it go. She knew it. Knew it. it. Yep. And Pritchett will check back in off the missed shot. Rush entering as well. Hay will lead the lineup for Campbellsville. Benefield exiting for Ozarks. Campbellsville leading by 13. He's going to look for a season high in turnovers. Ozarks is this ball deflected by Bertram, but Jones able to grab it, bounces. That ball kicked out of bounds by Courtney Pritchett. Ozarks had 27 against Florida National, 25 against Indiana Wesleyan in terms of turnovers. Jones holds it on the end line, able to get it through to Moran. Moran out. Linville is open. Three straight away is good for Abby Linville. Well, you got to think, yeah, sorry, Matt. You got to think here, this Ozarks, if they can get it to a stop here and another shot to get it down to single digits, um, they would be pleased with how this second quarter has gone. Pedigo, down around 30 seconds remaining in the half. Pritchett, she'll take the jumper. That is short. And Linville, the rebound. Ozarks with a chance to get it to single digits here. Long, they've got Jones. Jones nearly stepped out of place. She was able to stop herself but threw it out of bounds on the far side down in the corner. And Pettigo will check out. Lauren Lee back in. Sarah Sutton will jump up off the sideline for Campbellsville as well. Pritchett checking out. So we'll get the shooter. Sh shooters out there. In there. Yeah, 
Lee out top. Bertram circling. Here's Lee. Oh, she oh. was looking for Luby and for miscommunication. Moran back. Jones walk. No call. And that is where the first half will come to a close. 43-35 the score. Campbellsville will head to the locker room with an eight-point advantage. So despite the turnovers by the Ozarks, if they can remedy that, we are going to be in it's, for a dogfight We're in here. for a dogfight. You're exactly right. As the uh, court will clear. They'll throw time up on the clock. We're going to keep it right here because Corbin Harris will have our senior day recognitions with uh, men's basketball going first. Brent Vernon already at the table. So we're just waiting for everyone to exit and then they'll get uh, they will get the men's basketball team out there. So uh, Guys, whenever you're ready, we'll go ahead and turn Corbin Harris uh, in the public address. Turn that mic on. The Tigers will line the bench. We should get started here in just a moment as at halftime, Campbellsville's Lady Tigers lead College of the Ozarks 43-35 to here in the Powell Athletic Center. And it's trying to work on uh, getting everyone in their position here as Campbellsville will honor four Tiger basketball players, uh, men's players, and then you've got a couple of, of the Tiger cheerleaders that will be recognized here on senior day as well. Campbellsville's men's team getting a win a moment ago over Carolina Christian. Big win, I should say, as Brent Vernon is ready. And let's go down to Corbin Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, this time I'd like to ask you to direct your attention to half court for our special senior day recognition for our men's basketball team. Our first senior we'd like to recognize is Chandler Clements. Chandler from Clementsville, Tennessee is being escorted by his parents, Larry and Heather Clements, and his sister, Mackenzie Ramsey. This season, Chandler has averaged 6.1 rebounds in his senior season for the Tigers. Ladies and gentlemen, Chandler Clements. Our next senior from Elizabethtown, Kentucky, Darius Harding. Along with Darius is Alicia Lancaster, his brother Dominic Harding, and his sister Alicia Hughes. And two seasons with the Tigers, Darius has scored 599 points and is averaging 13.9 points per game this season. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Darius Harding. Our next senior is Jace Wallace. Jace from Lexington, Kentucky, is being escorted by his parents, Jamar and Heather McConnell, his grandmother, Peggy Hay, his grandfather, Scott Ashworth, and his brother, Cameron Adkins. As a member of the Tigers, last season, Jace was honored, at, or two seasons ago, he was honored as all Mid-South Conference member and is also a member of Campbell's University's 1,000th Point Club. Ladies and gentlemen, Jace Wallace. And our final senior for the men's basketball team is Cam Willis from Springfield, Kentucky. Cam is being escorted by his parents, Chad and Amy Willis. Cameron scored a career high in points today with 15 points. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear one big round of applause for our men's basketball seniors. Tiger basketball seniors recognized here at the Powell Center. They'll get uh, a group picture here as the Tiger cheerleading squad will recognize a pair of their members. I think there was uh, a couple, or maybe more than that. We were told two, but it looks like more than two back down through there as uh, Campbellsville with the eight-point advantage, 43 to 35 on the women's side here. Again, the Lady Tigers will have their senior day festivities uh, following their game so that'll be a, a bit unique but uh, coach ginger high calvin likes to take the 
uh, take the emotion out. Benji is Campbellsville University uh, looking to pick up the win over Ozarks and uh, then kind of get into some of the, the emotional things, bidding farewell to those seniors. So now we'll go back down to Corbin Harris in just a moment as the Tiger Cheer Fans Squad. Fans would also like to take a moment to recognize our we'll cheer seniors. Our first senior senior for the cheer team is Caitlin Gover. Escorted by Brad, Katie, and Jasmine Gover, and Karsten Rainey. She has been on the team for four years. Ladies and gentlemen, Caitlin Gover. Our next senior is Joshua Taub. And his first year on the team is being escorted by Dylan Price. Our next senior is Macy Allman, being escorted by Lynette Allman and Gary Allman. Macy has been on the team for two years. And our final senior is Elizabeth Cotton, being escorted by Trevor Lewis and Amanda Gabehart. Elizabeth has been on the team for four years. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get one big round of applause for your Lady Tiger and Tiger cheerleading seniors.
Back inside the Powell Center here at halftime, Campbellsville with the eight-point advantage over College of the Ozarks. And Benji, before we look into the numbers, you know, that was a really fun first half of basketball. Again, 43 to 35 the score. The Lady Tigers leading by eight, but all in all, a uh, terrific uh, first half in terms of, yes. of enjoying the action. Well, like we said uh, there on the broadcast, Matt, uh, this feels like a, a an NAI national tournament game. Um, this, as you said, this Ozark team, they deserve to be in that tournament. They are extremely well, uh, well coached, well versed ball club. Uh, you take away the turnovers. And, uh, and, you know, even if you look at the turnovers, they're only down eight. You take half of those away, this is a totally different ballgame. Taking a look at some of the numbers here, Campbellsville finishes 53% from the field in the first frame, 17 of 32. They were 5 of 11 from deep. That is 45.5%. And then at the free throw line, the Lady Tigers finished at 80%, 4 of 5. For College of the Ozarks, 66.7%. They blistered the Nets in the first half, 14 of 21. Six of nine from deep for the Lady Bobcats. And uh, they were 50% uh, at the free throw line, one of two. So again, we'll get back to it. We'll talk about the turnovers in a moment. But had the Ozarks gotten as many shots at the rim as the Lady Tigers would have, uh, the way they shot the basketball, yes. this would be quite an interesting score here at halftime. It still is at just an eight-point margin. The Lady Tigers were led off the bench by Kayla Luby. Ten points, four rebounds for the transfer senior from Concordia University. She finished five of seven from the field with an assist. Campbellsville got eight from Maddie Boyle. Boyle was two of four from long range with a pair of Edward Jones payouts. Six points for Lauren Lee. She had three assists and two steals. Six from Elizabeth Bertram off the bench. Two made Edward Jones threes for Burt. Campbellsville got five from Bailey Pedigo, one steal for BP. She hit an Edward Jones triple. Four points for Courtney Pritchett, four assists and a steal. Four points from Whitney Hay, who finished with two boards and two assists. The Lady Tigers get minutes from Caitlin Wilkes, Tyra Flowers, Maddie Nally, and Sarah Sutton. Those young ladies failed to score. And how often have we called Caitlin Wilkes' name at halftime for being scoreless? Yeah, doesn't happen it often doesn't, for the reigning it, conference player. It, 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 it really doesn't. And uh, I think. They were intentional. They, obviously, they had scouted, and they were really double-teaming Caitlin. But, uh, uh, you know, as she only got two shot attempts. But what about Kayla Luby coming off the bench, Matt? Uh, she was able to dominate down low and uh, five of seven shooting with, for ten points and four rebounds. For Ozarks, they were led in scoring by their leading scorer, Kaylee Frank, with 12 points, five of six shooting for Frank. They got ten points from Blythe Benefield. Uh, she finished with three assists, two steals, and a pair of rebounds. Eight points from Logan Jones, two helpers and two boards. Two points from Susie Moran, and then off the bench, Abby Linville pitched in a made three-point basket for the Ozarks. Rebounding, Campbellsville with eight rebounds, Ozarks with ten, so not, not many to go around. Three no. offensive boards for the Lady Tigers. The uh, Lady Cats had one offensive rebound and uh, assist, similar, 14 apiece. They're dead, dead on. Steals. Six for Campbellsville, four for the Ozarks, but here's the number. This is the difference in the basketball game right here. 18 Ozarks turnovers, six for Campbellsville. We'll immediately look at the enhanced scoring numbers on that category, Benji. Points off turnovers, 26 to three. Yeah. So that is that's the, that's the, the difference. That's the tail. Uh, you know, eight-point differential. Um, once again, they take care of the ball. They don't turn it over as much. Here in the second half, the way that they're shooting, they're going to claw right back into this thing, and we're going to have ourselves a, a, a dandy of a finish. So about 30 seconds remaining here in our halftime period as Campbellsville University out on the floor, and it looks like they've got their starting group on the court here. Campbellsville looking for win number 26 on the season. The Lady Tigers will uh, head to Bowling Green for their Mid-South Conference semifinal matchup on Sunday. So uh, they get the bye thanks to winning the regular season, the conference, with a perfect 12-0 record. And they will take to the floor on Sunday in the early game. I think they also, is that, uh, that's a two? What time uh, is that game? I believe or it's a one, a one. I think one it's Eastern. 12 noon. Yeah. It's 12 noon, one Eastern. That's yeah. correct. And uh, they will take on the winner of Freed Hardeman and Lindsey Wilson College. Campbell's will work inside. Pritchett finds Boyle. That shot no good as Boyle spills to the ground. Rebound to the Ozarks. They'll push. 
Rush out front. Frank Chase drives in. Ball is deflected, but actually they deflect the arm of Frank, I think. Foul will go against Lauren Lee. Her first, first on Campbellsville. How do you like that maroon pin? Though? I like that. That's a little change up. Yeah, I like that. The pilots are always good pins. Oh, they're, go they're, they're, they're my favorites. So. Out top, Jones holds. Back to Frank on the left wing. Now into the corner. Rush going to try the three. That is good. It's a five-point basketball game here, 43-38. to 38. Lauren Lee will leave it with Boyle. She'll do the same to Pettigo. Now Pritchett has it out front. Inside, Wilkes rolling, and she won't stay scoreless too much longer as she gets the shot down inside, the send by Courtney Pritchett. Yeah, it's a, it was a set play there. They, they're intentional trying to get the ball to Caitlin and uh, get her in the flow of the game, and so good job by the Tigers, Lady Tigers. Moran into the corner. Benefield run off the spot. She will drive in. Leaves it with Moran in the middle of the lane. Spins right back into Pritchett. We get a whistle here that will go against the Lady Tigers. We'll go against Pritchett. That's her second. Moran going to the free throw line. Matt, she's a 65% uh, free throw shooter on the year, averaging 17 points a game. First free throw off the mark. Yellow choked up there. My snack at halftime there went down the wrong pipe there. Moran's second free throw. That one's strong as well. Lauren Lee will one hand the rebound. You know, one thing about this uh, Ozarks team, now to me, I mean, I don't know how they wouldn't be a national tournament team, but if they felt like they're on the bubble, there's nothing to, to pop that bubble and, and ensure uh, yourself right. a trip like a win here on the road against number three. Here's Pritchett open, 4-3. Bang! Courtney, switch it again! Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, just keep shooting it like that, Courtney. Not feeling as well, but she's playing some really solid minutes here this afternoon for this Lady Tiger team. Campbellsville back to seven points already. Work defensively here, trying to force another turnover. They get a deflection. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Ozark. Long pass to Benefield inside. She'll go down on the inline to Frank. Won't shoot it. Jones with the ball fake. Stops to the elbow right side. And now they come back left. In line, that is Frank, shot no good. Rebound gets tapped out, taken by Ozarks. Open, Jones, three, too strong. It was a deep three, a little long on it. And here comes Campbellsville leading by 10. Pedigo, head down, back out. Trailer, Wilkes, three, round and out, no good. This is Jones, the rebound. Check that, that is Rush. Benefield across the line. Lee digging back in to help. Benefield keeps it free. Now Frank will go right side. Jones in line. Moran cutting. Frank runs right into Wilkes. Puts her head down. And we're going to go to the arrow, I believe, as the double thumbs go up. The arrow will stay with Ozarks. I was going to. I was just going to say that. I don't know if y'all heard that on the broadcast, but uh, Caitlin should just fell down. That would have been yeah. a charge. Now Frank could. Bullied her way yeah, in there. She was trying to get all the way inside That's the blocked. rim. That's blocked by Lee. And unfortunately for Campbellsville, it's caught on the inline by Ozarks. Moran with it. They'll go to Frank on the inline. She lost the handle one second. Pedigo picks it up. It would have been a shot clock violation. Here is Lee. Left block stops. They put a saddle on her. Ball hits the bottom of the rim. And two shots coming for Lee as uh, Rush had no choice but to yeah. land on Lauren Lee. So Taylor Rush picks up her first. First on Ozarks as a club. Well, Lauren to the free throw line here, where she's already been five times, four or five. Actually, the, is that the only free throws we've shot today has been Lauren? Maybe. I believe so. Free throw here is good. 49-38, Campbellsville had seen Ozarks cut it to five here, but the Lady Tigers have pushed it back up a bit as Lee misses the second free throw, so it'll remain an 11-point Campbellsville advantage. Lauren Jones being chased by Boyle. Skips it. Rush collects. Now she needs somewhere to go with it. Bounces to Frank at the elbow. Opposite elbow, Jones sends it off to Benefield, and she'll throw up a shot in the paint. Gets her own miss. Spins working away from Pritchett. That shot no good. 
Bodies go down. Wilkes falls into the back of Moran. Somebody got to put that bu uh, put yeah, back bucket. Yeah, I don't. I don't know who that was either. I was looking at the contact yep. down below. I want to take a look here at the play by play. Lee out front rush. I believe got the put back inside. Pedigo finds Lee rolling, and Campbellsville connects on the basket down inside. It was Pedigo sending it to Lee. Set play again for Campbellsville. Results in points. Closing in on the six-minute mark. Back tap by Boyle as Jones stopped. Boyle went right around her and swatted at it. Boyle has it left side. Pritchett and now Campbellsville will call at the play. Lee between the circles in the middle. Pedigo in the handoff. Back to Boyle. Pritchett. Back door. Pedigo not there. Pritchett waits. And the help defender Rush comes in. Pokes it free, but Pritchett knocks it away from Rush. Now Wilkes inside off the glass. Too strong. And the rebound to Moran. Pritchett locks it up. Ball free now as they battle for it. Boyle tried to get a hand on it. And then out the other way is Bennyfield. And here a charge. Let's nope. see. The shot from Frank no good. We're going to have a whistle. Or oh, we're going to call, call block. a block. Block on Pedigo. So Bailey was underneath trying to take the contact as Bennyfield passed it off. But uh, they call her for the foul. Boyle checks out. Pritchett checks out, Wilkes checks out, Luby, Flowers, and Bertram re-enter for Campbellsville. 51-40 to score, 5.32 to play in the third. Benefield pitches it in. Frank, now Rush, he'll try a three. That is no good, looked pretty good off the hands, but uh, just off the right side of the iron. Bertram the other way. Lee with it. Campbellsville leads by 11. Bertram back to Pedigo. Flowers off the elbow. Wanted Luby not there. Bertram back to Bailey Pedigo. She'll drive in line in the middle of the lane. Flowers had it. Luby off the deflection. Now Lee spinning. Shot. No good. And I don't think it hit the iron. Flowers did all she could. And she's behind the goal. Just had to try to throw it back. So shot clock violation on Campbellsville. Fifty-one forty. Jones bounces. Flowers got a hand on it, couldn't pick it up. Campbellsville nearly comes up with the takeaway. And this will bring us to a media stoppage. Ozarks with 20 turnovers. They just narrowly avoid their 21st. And at the media timeout, Campbellsville with the 11-point advantage, 51 to 40. We'll step away. You're following Lady Tiger basketball on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Fifty-one forty. Our score: Matt Payton and Benji Kelly at the Powell Athletic Center. The Lady Tigers have uh, benefited greatly from that young lady over the years. Courtney Pritchett at the Edward Jones payout a moment ago. Those following along on our video streaming coverage online or local cable got the shot of that replay. Benefield inbounds. This is Jones. Now Moran across the lane. Benefield has it. Avoids the defender, but hits the bottom of the iron. Hey is tied up she and frank the arrow will stay with campbellsville as the lady tigers will keep uh, or get possession bertram now hay they bounce the flowers at the elbow luby gonna roll flowers can't get her now bertram couple of dribbles. There's the entry. Double team comes. Luby just going to have to pick it up and try to get it to a teammate, I believe. Luby looking. 
Here is Lee. She didn't catch it cleanly. Still plenty of time to work across the lane. Lee to Luby off the window. Good. She gets the deuce. And Lauren Lee the dime. Well, I tell you, they had to work for that one there, Matt. And uh, just a great job from Luby to get it to Lee back to Luby. For an easy, I won't say an easy bucket, but for a nice bucket. A bucket nonetheless. It's Here it. is a missed shot. Ball tap and the rebound. It'll go out of play. Last touch by, I believe, Benefield and uh, Ozark. So Campbellsville gets it back. Ozarks in a similar color scheme to the Lady Tigers. They've got on the maroon jerseys today. Fifty-three forty, Campbellsville with the advantage. Lee looking to add. Gets the screen from Luby. Luby rolls tight quarters of the pass. You gotta be kidding that me. That is unreal. I don't. Even, Kayla Luby. I, I tell you, is she a math major? We well, you know, Ginger and I had this thing. It's not pretty, but they don't grade them as flowers. Reads that pass ahead. She's got Lauren Lee right side of the lane. Lee will go up, and I don't know who the defender was. Somebody got in there and made Number it. Number two, two. Yeah, that's rush. rush. She rushed back and forced the miss, but it'll stay with Campbellsville. I just, I mean, even when Luby's getting ready to shoot that, you almost think to yourself, that's got no chance. You know, in the back of your head, you're thinking that's too tough of a look, and it goes in. I mean, she's, uh, it is unbelievable the knack she has for being able to finish in tight spaces here. Lee bounces, Hay in the middle, stops, thought about it, now steps through, shot good for Whitney Hay. Nice up and under step through, like you said there, Matt, from Whitney. 57-40, the Lady Tigers have extended this thing. Ozark's got it, it was 43 to uh, 38, Benji. Yeah, they got it so to five. 14 to two run. Yeah, Kansasville just, uh, that, that three, three from Courtney Pritchett got the, got, kinda got the ball rolling there. Flowers will pick up her third. Lee will check out. Maddie Nally checking in. Tyra Flowers checks out. Pedigo had entered for Lee. Nally for Flowers now. Let's see what Ozarks can draw up here. It's baseline out of bounds opportunity. Frank has to avoid two defenders. Finds an open Jones for three, and that is good for Lauren Jones. Nice job by... Frank to keep possession as uh, it looked like she was in a bit of a pickle for a moment, but finds an open teammate on the right wing. I wouldn't want to play this Ozarks no, team in the tournament. No, I'd say absolutely not. It, I mean, like you said, it's going to be a tough out. Here is Bertram there jumper. Go. Good for Elizabeth Bertram from 16 feet. Yeah, good to see Bert uh, having a good game here this evening. Knocked down a couple threes. Like Wayne Jones holds, 59-43, Campbellsville leads. Left side, Linville's open. She'll try a three herself, and that is good. Ozarks again continues to shoot it well. Yeah, the difference, as we said there at halftime, man, the difference is the turnovers. 21 turnovers. And Campbellsville's points off, off those turnovers. Bertram. Back to Nally. Entry. Luby. Ball deflected. It's free. Picked up by Moran. Quickly ahead. She hits Jones. Jones will go long. Linville will stop. In the middle. Moran gets it back. She grabbed it initially, but now misses the shot inside. Just a bit short on that attempt. Pedigo. Hay. Free throw line. Now right side of the lane. Shot up. High five and one for Whitney Hay. She'll yeah. go to the free throw line as Benefield gets... A piece of the hand on the top side. Blythe Benningfield picks up her, th uh, I've got her for three. I got her for three. Two on Ozarks as a club. Hay at the line. 61-46. Hay to extend. Can't do it. Jones to Linville on the dribble. Left wing. Elbow Frank into the corner. Jones, three short. Rebound Frank between Lady Tigers. Put back is good, almost falling to the ground. And Frank deflects that as she was getting up. Now he never saw her. Here's Benefield inside across the lane. Moran catches and goes up. And that's four quick ones for Ozarks. Yeah, that's just good heads up defense right there, Bob. Way to go finds Luby, who is fouled. Got that on Linville. But you got you got to think there for uh, for Kaylee Frank. That's just uh, good good heads up play there to steal the inbounds pass and four quick points. 
We'll be at the line. Kayla's have herself a, a really good here afternoon. 57% free throw shooter on the year. First free throw good, 62-50. Kaylee Frank's sister, Haley, graduate student at Mizzou on the basketball team. So uh, a little SEC action there. They got uh, the they blood got, line. The bloodline's pretty good. Pretty good. I think this season she's averaging 17 a game. Well, not bad. Not huh? bad. So she's uh, 17 a game. Sister at Ozarks averaging 18 a game. Jumper here, no good for Jones. Put back from Moran is blocked, but she's going to draw the foul. This will go against Bertram. That's Burt's first, and five on Campbellsville. So Moran goes to the line for two shots. Sixty-three fifty. Campbellsville leading by thirteen. Luby hit a pair of free throws. Moran's shot here, no good. And Whitney Hay, the other side. Hay, right side of the lane, gets Moran in the air and draws the contact. So for Moran, that's her second. Four on Ozarks as a team with 33.4 seconds remaining. I agree with Moran. She said that's all ball clean, but I, there's she kind of landed on Whitney yeah, on the did. backhand. Yeah, there's a little, little the body contact down low there. Yeah. Now, as a player, I would hate that call as well. I know. But, well, first of all, let it play through. Um, don't, don't anticipate that there is actually going to be a foul there. Good look there at Coach Becky Mullis in her 11th season as the head coach of Ozarks. And this free throw good for Whitney Hay. So she gets one of two, 64 to 50 to count. Side. This is Frank. Shot no good. Rebound taken in by Whitney Hay. Shot clock is off with 20 seconds remaining. She wants to run. Hay is hit from behind. Took a funny step. I don't like the look of that. Hay. Well, and that puts Hay right back at the free throw line of the bonus. Hay favoring that left leg there, Benji. Free throw here is good. So Moran picks up her third. All three of them. No, nope, check that. Two of them. The last two in this quarter. One more. And that is no good. So Hay continues to get one of two. Ten seconds on the game clock. Campbell's were leading by 15 as we're getting close to the fourth quarter. Linville open. Hay closed out. Linville going to have to try a Oh, oh balance three and hit it. Tip of the hat. What a so shot. young Miss Linville over there. She knocks in the three in that corner on the move, trying to avoid Whitney Hay on a closeout. And it draws Ozarks to within a dozen. 65-53 hour score as we head to the fourth quarter. You're following Lady Tiger basketball on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Five fifty-three, Campbellsville leading Ozarks here in the Powell Center. There's uh, Whitney Hay bucket that led to an and one opportunity for the Lady Tigers. Did uh, Benji? Did you see earlier when you were on that Continental Athletic Conference? There was there uh, the top eight tournament. Make it. Well, the, the, the bracket hadn't been released. The yet. bracket hadn't no. been released. Okay, so I wonder how they do that. It, because well, based upon last year's, of course, I don't know how many teams were in that uh, the independents last year, but they only eight advanced. Well, I didn't know if they would set it based on overall record. Is it blind draw? Well, I think it'd have to be overall record. I would think because like a, Wilberforce went from the mid south last year to that independent. Yes, and is back to play here. Frank 
Down inside between Sutton and Pritchett. Needs help. Throws it out. Boyle nearly got a hand on it. Here is Mattingly. She'll throw up a shot in the lane. That is good for Kiara Mattingly. But, um, and the foul will go against Caitlin Wilkes. But you've got like um, Fisher. Massachusetts only played five, five game. games. Morris the same. The most played versus independent team was Haskell Indian Nations. They played 11 games against, nope, I take that back. Crowley's Ridge played 12. So, But some have five, some have 12 against independent. So a little, it'll be interesting to see how they do that. Here's Sutton. Can't shoot it. Back to Pritchett. Now Boyle. Boyle down the end line. Shot is blocked, but she draws the foul. I believe from the backside rush, got a piece of her. Yeah, and I, I misspoke earlier that uh, I thought the tournament started on, on Tuesday. I went back and looked. It actually starts on Thursday. So, um, so they've got not, a little more time. they got a little more time. And obviously, today would have been a rest day for them and then three days of preparation. And, of course, I don't even know where that tournament's being held. Probably somewhere out in the Midwest. Um, if you've got teams all over the nation. And Matty Boyle so. gets a pair of free throws for Campbellsville. But, once again, this is a... This is a team here, Matt, like we said, they deserve to be in the national tournament. 21 wins, and they played a tough schedule. And this pass picked off. Courtney Pritchett took it away down inside, another turnover on the Ozarks. Lee, left side open, Boyles the shooter. Three, bang, Maddie Boyle. She hits the Edward Jones payout for Campbellsville. Yeah, leader, leading score, 13 points, Maddie Boyle. 15-point margin, Moran in the middle. Out to the shooter, Linville won't shoot it. On around they come, nice ball movement. Rush takes the inline jumper, too strong. Lauren Lee chases it down. Lee has Pritchett. Sutton, wide open. Three in the air, that is off the mark. Even Ginger High Colvin jumped up wanting that one to go down. <laughs> right side, Linville. Rush, bounces to Frank, spins, Linville again, three, no good. Did Lee get a piece of that? That was well short, and it goes out of play. Benefield will re-enter. Seventy to fifty-five, Campbellsville with a fifteen-point advantage. Eight minutes and eleven seconds on the clock as Lauren Lee comes ahead. Left side, Pritchett cutting his boil. She's got it. Shot blocked by Moran. Nice recovery by Susie Moran. Long pass to Benfield. Back. Now Linville. Inside Frank. Rush open left corner. Three. Good for Taylor Rush. Tell you what, this uh, Ozark team is very disciplined on the offensive end. Always that extra pass to find the open shooter. Here is Lee out. Shooter is Pritchett. Three, no good. I thought that might hang. It would not. The other side comes Ozarks. Corner rush. Three again. No good. Lee, the rebound is taken away by Linville. She was able to knife right in front of her. Back to the corner. Three, good for Linville. And it's going to get interesting yeah, here. Yeah, you know, it's a nine point. That, the, way, the way that they're shooting the ball, they've been shooting it like that all night. The three is always the great, allow you to, to come back into this thing and back-to-back -back threes. Cut it to single digits. Left side, Boyle holds, waits for Wilkes. Now Pritchett, she'll take the jumper, too strong. Pritchett tries to get around Moran, nearly kept it alive, but Moran able to collect it. Pennyfield, left side, Linville catches, yep, you could tell she yeah, landed she's too a little far. too far away. So looking here, Benji, on the, uh, this is, brings us to a stoppage. They've got some games in on March, Thursday, March, or let's see, Thursday, February 29th, Arkansas Baptist and Northern New Mexico are scheduled to play in Washington, Adventist, and Haskell. So I wonder if maybe those games are already set for their conference tournament, it could, perhaps. It, I, it's, it's I don't know. Anyway, driving underneath is Lee. She'll go down the inline, into the corner. Three on the way, off the mark. Pedigo shot no good. Moran quickly out to Benefield. Nine-point game. Benefield going to throw one up. She's fouled by Bailey Pedigo. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those. You just need to let it go ahead and, and play on. Now you got a chance here to, to give Ozarks a chance to cut this thing to six. 
with so six with to go. 626 remaining. It is a 70 to 63 score. And off the missed free throw, Campbellsville back the other way. Pritchett, three. Bang! It's a big Courtney one. Pritchett again with the Edward Jones three. She may just put the Lady Tigers on her back down the stretch if necessary. She's done that a few times over the last five years. Benefield looking for somewhere to go with it, rips it away, and we get a timeout taken. Heads he called there by Coach Mullis, the Ozarks sideline. And this will bring us to a media timeout here with 6.01 on the clock. It will be Ozarks basketball when we return, 73 to 63. You're following the Lady Tigers on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Seventy-three, sixty-three. the Lady Tigers lead by 10. Campbellsville University and Ozarks have went back and forth a bit here throughout the day, and Courtney Pritchett seems to knock down timely threes anytime Campbellsville's needed it here. Benji Kelly, she got them rolling early in the half, and then that one gives them a little more separation. Yeah, just a, once again, a heads-up play uh, by your senior uh, who's you know, was it game number 149? 148. 148, okay, well. Yes, here. Pedigo, Pedigo called for the foul on that entry. 73-63, two seconds go off the clock. Benefield pitches it in, now back out top. This is Frank, Linville between the circles. Ozarks has not went very deep on their bench today. Oh, they they played, played just seven. seven. In the corner, Rush again. She's had the hot hand. Won't hit that one. And Moran. I don't know about that. No. I don't, I don't penalize an athletic jumper. Mama said if you don't have anything yeah. nice to say, don't say anything. Well, and it was the long rebound, you know. Yes. If that comes right down to Luby. It's different. It's yeah. different. But Moran now at risk on a tough foul call that goes against her. Yeah, that's her fourth is what I have her for. Yeah, that's four. Lee, Campbellsville slows it down a bit. Pedigo bounces to Pritchett. Right side, Lee. Lee the crossover, middle. Kicks to Pedigo. She'll work down the end line. Avoids the defender. Shot too strong, pops off. Bailey gets it back. Shooter, Bertram, three. Bang, Elizabeth Bertram from her high school teammate, Bailey Pedigo. They combined on those several times throughout the years. They Edward just kind of know, payout. yeah, just kind of know where each other are in a good offensive board and a kick out. A second chance points, man. Those are those are daggers sometimes. 76-63. Ozarks had it to seven. The Lady Tigers have hit two three since Pritchett, then Bertram, Frank through contact, difficult shot, wouldn't go. Had to go the rebound. Lee. Closing in on four and a half minutes to play. Warren Lee still on the dribble, working towards Kayla Luby. Now Pritchett. Lee again. Hands it back. This is Pedigo. Kicks open. Here is Lee going to drive now. Ball deflected, and we get a late whistle here as Linville called for the foul. Those are ones that will send coaches make coach just uh, go crazy there yeah, late in the shot late clock. Yeah, late in the shot clock, late whistle. The play was already passed, so uh, yeah. And another yeah. media here. This will be the under five media, 416. So between the floating medias and the standard medias and all that good stuff, 76-63 the score. Campbellsville leads by 13 points with four minutes and 16 seconds to play. Stay with us here on the Campbellsville University Sports Network.
76-63 the score. The Lady Tigers lead by 13. Bailey Pedigo got her own miss. Sent it out to Elizabeth Bertram, the southpaw, the former Lady Trojanette. One to another. Combined to extend the lead back to 13. And now Lauren Lee will inbound for CU. Inside. So they come out to Pritchett there. Now Burt will hold back to Pritchett left side. Like a post touch for Luby. They can't get it to her. Nice job defensively here. Lee Cradles goes through. She protects the basketball. Will jump stop and an easy basket. Yeah, just a uh, heads up play by your point guard there to get, it, get into the middle and uh, able to get past those defenders for an easy layup. Benefield out to Frank. 15 points the margin. Frank in the front of the lane there and missed that shot just a bit short. Pedigo wants to go long to Lee. Lee right down to the rim and she is whacked. His coach stood up right in front of me there trying to see that. Gonna, it's going to be on Rush. Lauren Lee will have two shots here. She's in double figures today. She's got a dozen to go with nine helpers. You got to think about the last four or five games that Lauren's played. Um, you know, Mid South Conference Player of the Week and a big bucket there against Georgetown, like you said the other night, to put them ahead. And here tonight, another outstanding performance, as you said, 13 points, nine boards or nine assists, and four four rebounds. When your point guard can get rebounds, that's uh, that's just almost like added added bonus. Luby, 16 points, eight rebounds for the Lady Tigers. Nice performances from Campbellsville today. Ball knocked away by Luby, as I said her name. Now Boyle has it ahead quickly. Lee, she'll pause, let Linville fly by, and Lauren Lee has two more for Campbellsville University. Yeah, and that all started with a defense there from Kayla Luby getting the deflection. Bouncing right wing is Jones. They'll come back near side, Linville underneath. Benny filled out. Frank at the free throw line. Boyle may have gotten a hand on that. She was right there on the shot. Now Jones, after the offensive rebound by Ozarks, can't finish that shot attempt. Luby, the rebound for Campbellsville. She's a board away from a double-double. Sutton left side, three. Bang! Sarah Sutton, her old friend, shooting, shooting. Shooting, shooting. Transfer from Murray State. Man, we've seen her drain some long threes. Full timeout taken by... Coach Mullis here as Sutton hits the three. Lauren Lee double figures with her 10th assist. And we'll step away on this full stoppage. Campbellsville leads 85-63 on the CU Sports Network. Chris Schroeder when you need him. 85-63. <laughs> the Lady Tigers lead it here. Matt Payton and the <laughs> former Tiger Benji Kelly courtside. Bree Gowdy into the lineup for CU. Lauren Lee's day may be done with 242 remaining. Bree, the local product, 5'5", the sophomore guard from right here in Campbellsville. And then this pass knocked away. Flowers the steal. She's tripped. This will go against Logan Jones. Again, if you're a, an Ozarks fan, you've tuned in today. This Lady Tiger team, they, they've done this to several throughout the season. But uh, Benji and I are here to tell you, you got a really, really yeah, good really basketball good team. Club. Well coached, well disciplined, and, and – um, 22 Should, points, not really indicative of No, what, it's not. And, but you know, here's the thing. They've cut it you know, to single digits several five. times, and the Campbellsville is just able to extend that. But uh, this is, a, this is once again, a, a tournament team. And I would hate to be in that uh, little pod of four teams, uh, whoever they come up against. Yeah. Um, I would not be surprised 
if they would make it uh, to uh, to Sioux City, Iowa. Three Gowdy going to be hit with a personal foul here. Tyra Flowers hit the uh, hit one of the free throws a moment ago. That foul on Bree is her first. It would shock me a bit if we don't look down here in a few days and uh, they've won that Continental yeah, absolutely. Conference Tournament. Inside, that is Moran. Shot no good, and ball goes out of bounds. Moran's had a rough second half here. She gets oh, she jam her finger. Hit again. She went down earlier. And took a shot to the leg, I think. Now she's left hand or something. Ball goes out of play. It'll stay with Ozarks. Bennyfield lobs it in. Rush and Linville in the same spot. Frank holds. Frank. Need some help. Linville there. Linville going to take the three. That is no good. Rebound to Flowers. And Tyra will bring Campbellsville back the other way. She'll finally slow down. Lost the handle there to Tyra as uh, Linville picks it up. Comes across the paint to Moran. And Moran able to get the finish. 86-65 the count. Less than two minutes to play. Don't forget the Lady Tigers will honor their seniors here in a moment. Senior day in the Powell Center. Rachel Presley will check in in a moment for CU, and I believe Kayla Luby will get the round of applause. Flowers driving, oh, yeah. nice move, Tyra, no good on the shot. And there's the rebound for Luby, so she does get the double, her double-double. There we go, we've just seen and several double-doubles today. You get a timeout as we will see Paige Serafini and Rachel Presley enter. Kayla Luby checks out for the final time, and uh, Maddie Nally will check out for Serafini. Well, I say final time. You know, we hope the Lady Tigers, they hosted that opening round last year, so you hope that they get that again. Yeah. I think this year that should be announced in a few days. Yeah, so. I think it comes out on the 29th. Um, I know we put the bid in, so wait and see. When you're a you're top five team and you hosted the year before, you, you feel you, really crummy you, if they took it from exactly. you. Exactly. You feel like you own that thing at this stage. Well, a lot of it, it comes down to money. Sutton, three. That's money. Bang! Sarah Sutton with an Edward Jones, three. 89-65, the Lady Tigers just above their season average. Left corner, the answer for Rush, no good. Rebound taken away by Presley. Presley, the 6'2 redshirt freshman forward from Somerset, Kentucky. Foul here will go against Rush. Maddie Lee will check back in. Foul on Rush is her fourth. Campbellswood also sent Paige Serafini in, 5'11", the sophomore guard from Lawrenceburg, Kentucky. Flowers checks out for Paige Evans, 5'3", sophomore guard from Hodgenville, Kentucky. Bree Gowdy at the line. Two shots, Bree hits the first free throw. 80% on the season for Bree Gowdy. Free throw good as well. 91-65. Down under a minute, so we're uh, just settling on the final game numbers here. Outside, this shot no good for Rush. Rachel Presley, another rebound for Campbellsville. Bree Gowdy ahead. The Lady Tigers, 38 seconds from wrapping up this regular season. Outside, Evans. Up and again, back to Serafini. Three on the way, no good. Rebound to Bree Gowdy. She'll spin, go back up. She's foul. This will go against Lauren Jones, 5'8", freshman guard from Mansfield, Missouri. Avery Arnold in there as well, 5'6", the sophomore guard from Blue Eye, Missouri. I've never been to Blue Eye, Missouri. Nor have I. Free throw for Bree is short, so she gets one of two there. 92 to 65 to score. Shot clock off. Rush with it, barring a foul. The other end, Campbellsville is going to finish their day at 92 points. Rush still on the dribble. Nice job defensively for the Lady Tigers as they try not to give up a clean look here at the end. Arnold finds herself with the ball. She's open, and the three is good for Avery Arnold. Averaging three and a half points a game and uh, gets in at the tail end and sinks the triple. 92-68 will be the final score here as the Lady Tigers 
knock off Ozarks. Campbellsville will finish their regular season with a 26-1 record. Ozarks will fall to 21-7. So Campbellsville picks up the, the victory, 26-1. Ozarks 21-7. Ginger High Colvin picking up win number 472 in her career for the Lady Tigers. And we'll uh, try to figure out exactly how this is going to work. We've got the senior day stuff for Campbellsville coming. So I'm trying to see. Do you want to – you can go ahead. Do you need a minute or are you good? So we'll wait and see here. Been just kind of a unchartered territory. Yeah, we've never so we've not a, never done it this way before. So we'll uh, we'll give the Lady Tigers some time. They'll get the parents down here and, yeah. and all of that. Um, let's see. Ginger is going to come on over. So we'll knock this out real quick and talk with the head coach before they get. They can't start senior day without Ginger High Colvin. So that's the good news. They'll just uh, wait a moment. Coach, we'll make we'll make this a little brief. I know you've got something else to do right. here, but uh, this Ozarks team's really good. Uh, they come in obviously yesterday threw things into a bit of a tailspin, a whirlwind, a lot of different ways. Fortunately, they were able to 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 hang out, get this game in, a big victory for you guys, and that's a really good Ozarks team. First of all, kudos to them, to Coach Mullins, and for for Ozarks and for their administration at their university to allow them to stay an another day. Their conference tournament is starting up this week. It's a big, big tournament for them. And um, they, they've they handled it with just so much professionalism. professionalism and uh, I just couldn't be more thankful for, for what they did for us at, at this time. And I knew, uh, I knew she was a great coach, great person, and uh, it just solidified what her and her kids did for us. And, and we're so appreciative that they came in and, and stuck it out. My opinion means very little, but that's a national tournament team. Uh, my opinion, I hope, means a little. <laughs> and More it than is mine. A national, it is a national tournament team. I feel like if Ozarks were in our league, I think teams in our league would, would sit and tell you this is a this is a national tournament team. Their post game is so strong. Their guard plays great. Uh, they shoot it like just they shoot just lights out. Uh, they're very well coached, and and yes, I will, I will preach to anyone when they will hear that it's a national tournament team. You guys get a couple of double doubles today. Lauren Lee, 15 and 10, uh, 10 assists, uh, and Kayla Luby, 16 and 10 off mm -hmm. the bench. And the angles today, we and I, we, you and I, are laughing about this. I think it started with with Bailey Pedigo. Uh, it, 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 they don't grade them, right? Uh, no. It's not always pretty, but they don't grade them. No. And Kayla Luby has really picked that up and, and ran with it. Some yep. of the angles today, I don't know how those shots even get to the rim, and she gets them to go through. It is yeah. very and impressive. She's, she's so physical, and man. We're just, she's playing her best basketball right now, and uh, I couldn't be happier for her for that double-double. And uh, I know the team couldn't be happier for her because everybody knows Kayla's work ethic and what she gives to this basketball team and what she continues to give to us, not just in the in the basketball statistical sense, but it is in a leadership sense and, and work ethic. You know, if you, I, I say to the kids all the time, if everybody had Kayla's attitude and worked as hard as she did, I don't think anybody could touch us. We'll talk about the seniors on the show this week, so we won't get too far into it right. here, but Courtney Pritchett, 10.6 assists, a little under the weather, but your leader, you need yep. her out there, uh, yep. or one of them anyway, and, and Courtney she Pritchett, big. I will say, is a lot under the weather and she sucked it up today and uh, did an outstanding job for her team she wouldn't even fist bump me she threw the elbow no, out at me she she's was sick. like she, she is i'm a, gonna protect you from you right now she is a sick kid right now and it just says a lot about her on senior day to step up and do what she did coming down the stretch last one i'll let you go um trying to, you want everybody playing well and so you've gotten elizabeth bertram in there today yep. shot it well whitney hay really starting to mm -hmm. to get this thing to come together for her unstoppable at yep. times and then sarah sutton knocking in big shots yep. uh here at the end you're going to need these young ladies to yes, win are. games down the stretch and postseason yep. play it's nice to see that all coming it in. is you know we talk about our, our starting five so much but you, you talk about those kids that come off the bench and are so instrumental to what we do. Uh, Tyra Flowers, you throw that in there too. Maddie Nally, all those kids that can come in and just give us different looks uh, during games. And, um, you know, Maddie Nally, I don't know how many minutes she played today, but you look at the Freed Hardman game, she's probably one of the best players on the floor. And 
uh, that's what's so important about our team and I think what's so special about our team. Coach, go enjoy Senior Day festivities. No, I, we'll, I, I we'll, don't enjoy Senior well, Day festivities. You, you got the win. The <laughs> good I will, news is I will. you can hey, – how about you just play in the conference semifinals next weekend? You don't even have to get that opening round win. You just go okay. straight to the semis. Okay. So right. uh, congratulations Thank you. Thanks, on the Matt. win. We appreciate it. Coach Ginger High Colvin and the Lady Tigers victorious here at the Pal Center as they get ready for their uh, Senior Day uh, – festivities to get underway here and we're just waiting for the thumbs up from Miranda Denny and uh, coach as the families make their way down we'll look down to Corbin Harris and we'll get Corbin to run through this then we will look at final game stats so let's go down to Corbin Harris this time we'd like to ask you to please direct your attention to center court where the Lady Tiger basketball program would like to recognize the members of their senior class The first senior they would like to recognize is Bailey Pedigo. Bailey is being escorted by her parents, Ivan and Michelle, her sister, Sarah Kate, Deanie and Mallory, and her brother-in-law, Judson, and her grandparents, Marshall and Sarah Kelser. Bailey is a winner in every sense of the word. She has been the glue for our team over the last several seasons. Bailey does all the little things that often go unnoticed, but that make our team successful. In her time as Lady Tiger, Bailey has been a part of 136 Lady Tiger wins and only 15 losses. Her future plans are to teach high school, math, or PE, and coach basketball. Bailey's favorite memory at Campbellsville is beating number one Thomas Moore at home last season. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing Bailey Pedigo. Our next senior is Maddie Boyle. Maddie is being escorted by her parents, Jeremy and Tracy, and her sister, Molly. Maddie has certainly saved her best for last. She has been named the Mid-South Conference Player of the Week three times this season and has also tied the school record for threes made in a game by knocking down nine three-point baskets against Faulkner University. Maddie has been a part of 96 Lady Tiger wins and only 12 losses. Her future plans are to teach elementary school and coach basketball and softball. Maddie's favorite memory at Campbellsville is celebrating her birthday in Hawaii with Maddie Nally, Sarah, and their families. Ladies and gentlemen, Maddie Boyle. Our next senior is Kayla Luby. Kayla is being escorted by her grandparents, Raymond and Ina Luby. Kayla has been a force for us in, on the inside this season. If you knew her daily routine and habits, you wouldn't be surprised. No one works harder or wants to be better than Kayla Luby. She's also the ultimate teammate and type of person you want to represent your program. Kayla's been a part of 56 Lady Tiger wins and only four losses. Kayla's future plans are to work in sports or business and to travel. And her favorite memory at Campbellsville is going to the beach in Miami and Puerto Rico. Ladies and gentlemen, Kayla Luby. Our next senior is Sarah Sutton. Sarah's being escorted by her parents, Kim and Ricky Huntsman. Sarah is one of the purest shooters to come through our program. If you have ever seen her get hot from behind the three-point line, you know you've witnessed something special. Not only is she a great shooter, but a tremendous teammate and a tremendous kid. She's been a part of 107 Lady Tiger wins and only 12 losses. Her future plans are to teach special education and to coach. And her favorite memory at Campbellsville is winning conference her junior year. Ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Sutton. The next senior we have to be recognized is Courtney Pritchett. Courtney is being escorted by her parents, Jack and Sydney, her brother Tyler, Kaylee, Sandy, and Leanne, her brother Cade and Kate, her cousin Ethan, and her grandparents Jerry and Gail Flowers. Courtney has been the face of the Lady Tiger program for the last five seasons. She started more games in a Campbellsville uniform than any other player in Lady Tiger history. She is a member of the CU 1000 Point Club a first-team NAI All-American, and a first-team All-Conference member. Courtney has been a part of 136 Lady Tiger wins and only 15 losses, and her future plans are to coach and hopefully stick around CU. Courtney's favorite memory at Campbellsville is sledding with B, Ashley, and Shyla. Ladies and gentlemen, Courtney Pritchett. Our final senior to be recognized is Caitlin Wilkes.
Caitlin's being escorted by her parents, Dean and Angela, her brother, Andrew, and her grandparents, Earl and Joanne Cooper. Caitlin is a member of the 1,000 Point Club at CU. She was a Mid-South Conference Player of the Year last season, as well as an NCCA National Player of the Year and a first-team NAI All-American. Caitlin has certainly left her mark on our program. In her time at Campbellsville, she's been a part of 87 Lady Tiger wins and only nine losses. Her future plans are to move to a city and get a job in sales. Her favorite memory at Campbellsville is going hiking for a team activity and catching a fish using a stick and an old fishing line that was found. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing Caitlin Wilkes. These six young ladies, though here for different amounts of time, will leave Campbellsville having won 90% of their games and multiple conference championships. One last time, please join me in recognizing our Lady Tiger seniors, Bailey Pettigo, Maddie Boyle, Kayla Luby, Sarah Sutton, Courtney Pritchett, and Caitlin Wilkes. Senior Day festivities for the Lady Tigers and Benji Kelly. We can uh, we can hang around this joint a long time from now, and I'm not sure we'll ever see a group of six come you. through quite like this one. Yeah, a special group of ladies, and you know the great thing is they've been playing together for so long. Um, and uh, I tell you, it's it, I would just love to see them just finish out here. You know, two wins in the conference tournament, and then get six more, uh, and, and ha hang one of those red banners here in this uh, in this gymnasium. Campbellsville University finishes today 53% from the field. They were 32 of 60, as uh, you can see some of the sights there as they uh, huddle up around their family and, and teammates and stuff. The uh, Lady Tigers 11 of 22 from long range. That is 50%. Nice day to, to finish 50% from deep. 17 of 24 from the free throw line today, 70.8%. For Ozarks, 46% shooting today. They were 27 of 58, 50% from deep, 13 of 26. So both teams shot it extremely well from long range. One of eight at the free throw line for Ozarks. Campbellsville led in scoring by Kayla Luby off the bench. A double-double for Luby. I want to say that's her first. Uh, she does. She has uh, double-digit rebounds a couple times. I'd have to go back and double-check for sure if uh, she had had a double-double before, but she may have got one in Puerto Rico. Uh, she may have. We'd have to go back and yeah. look. Uh, it won't be too hard to find out over the last couple of seasons. I'll double check that. But 16 points, 10 rebounds for Luby here today. She was phenomenal off the bench, man. She really was. You know, they were double teaming uh, Wilkes early, and uh, once they made this the change and brought Luby in there, we were able to kind of get her uh, some, uh, you know, easy looks. And once again, those uh, opportunities that, that she has when she gets the ball up on that glass. Uh, you know, nine times out of ten, it's probably going in. The Lady Tigers today get double figures from um, Lauren Lee. Fifteen, A double-double, I should say, from Lauren Lee. Fifteen points and ten assists for Lee here today. Benji, again, she's playing terrific basketball. She really is. Four rebounds, two steals, credited with a block as well. I mean, um, she's just... Uh, she had a double-double. She she had a double-double. Yeah. She and Luby both, and um, it, they're both, every one of them, just fun to watch. It, so At fun to moment. watch. Uh, and, and you want to be playing your best basketball as you go into postseason. And right now, uh, Lauren Lee is probably one of the, uh, you know, play, playing some of the best basketball we've ever seen her play. Campbellsville gets 13 from Maddie Boyle. One assist, two steals for Boyle here today. Four of nine shooting. The Lady Tigers get 11 off the bench from Elizabeth Bertram. Three assists, two steals. And one thing that I talked with coach about Benji was uh, here late in the season uh, you know you're coming down to the wire you need everyone playing well and yes. to see Bertram Hay and Sutton Hay finishes with 10 three rebounds uh, Sutton hit a couple of threes you're going to need all of those young ladies to be uh, at their best come postseason time which is upon us hey, it's here uh, it's here Matt when we're less than a week away and you know you got the conference tournament we're down to seven teams so there's only one a uh, team that actually gets in uh, the automatic bid, and then uh, you find out Thursday whether or not you're going to get to host. Uh, if not, then we'll we'll no, kind of know possibly where we're going, and then uh, take care of those two games and uh, make our, our our trip out to Sioux City. So it's here. 
second double double for Kayla Luby. She That's had what, one against Cumberland okay. last year on December the eighth. So she had 19 and 12 uh, monster performance in the win over the Patriots on the road that day. Anyhow, uh, the Lady Tigers get 10 from Courtney Pritchett under the weather, but post 10.6 assists. The Lady Tigers needed her today, Benji, a couple of big threes, big timely time. threes. Yeah, big threes at the right, as you said, at the right time. Ozarks was making a run, and Courtney knocks down one in the first half, one in the second half. Huge. Six for Sutton, as I mentioned, a couple of eight Edward Jones threes, five from Bailey Pedigo, three rebounds, three assists, two steals. Three points for Bree Gowdy off the free throw line. Two from Caitlin Wilkes. And one point from Tyra Flowers. That rounds out the scoring. Rachel Presley had a couple of rebounds. Maddie Nally played 10 minutes of action today. Paige Serafini, Paige Evans, see time and failed to score. For Ozarks, they were led by Kaylee Frank with 14. She finished with four assists. 12 off the bench for Abby Linville. Four assists, three rebounds. 12 more for Blythe Benefield. 11 from Logan Jones. They got uh, eight points from Taylor Rush. Six points, 10 boards from Susanna Moran. Susie Moran, three points from Avery Arnold at the buzzer. And uh, that rounds out the scoring. Two, actually, for Kiara Mattingly rounds out the scoring for Ozarks. Lauren Jones also saw time, failed to score. 28 rebounds for Campbellsville. Seven on the offensive end. 30 for Ozarks. Nine on the offensive end. The Lady Tigers finished with 29 assists, 12 steals, and 10 turnovers. 25 assists, 7 steals, 25 turnovers, points off turnovers, 35-7 in favor of Campbellsville. Really, Benji, That's it. that was the difference. That was the difference in this game. And, you know, you turned a, a really good ball club over, what, 25 times, and I believe that was two below their season high. And uh, you capitalize on those points off turnovers. Like you said, that's the difference. Campbellsville on the paint, a 32-26 advantage. Uh, second chance points, 12 to 10 in favor of CU, and bench points, 47 to 17 in favor of the Lady Tigers. Four ties, three lead changes all early. The Lady Tigers led for most of this ball game. They led by as many as 27. They trailed by as much as four and that wraps it up benji we'll yep, turn our we'll attention to Bowling a saturday Green. uh date with lindsey wilson on the men's side that is a 3 30 eastern time start yes. on saturday at bowling green high school the lady tigers in action at one eastern on sunday they will take on the winner of freed hardeman's women and lindsey wilson the blue raiders the four seed the lions the five seed on the women's side there so postseason play is here it's here man. it's here i mean march is march is here um really really love this time of year it's I, I could just sit and watch basketball all day long. The rest of the way, they're all covered on 88-7. Yes. The Tiger, uh, hopefully, if we're able to get back here for that NAI opening round, those games will be covered on these same outlets you're monitoring today. Uh, as we step away, we say a special thank you to Campbellsville University President Dr. Joseph Hopkins, as well as the Vice President for Athletics, Rusty Hollinsworth, and Director of Athletics, Jim Hardy, all of those gentlemen critical in supporting our coverage here. The entire sports information crew, all of our TV uh, folks uh, working today, Zach Wilson, Colin Sheffield, Jordan Annell, C.J. Burgess, Micah Eubank. Uh, they are scattered here, there, and yawn taking care of us on FM today. Nick Vandermeer, our entire crew of students who have taken care of us throughout this basketball season. They do a terrific job, as always, more uh, great work here today. Benji Kelly on color commentary. And to all of you who have followed our coverage today and throughout the season, we say a special thank you for joining us on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Signing off from the Powell Athletic Center after a pair of Tiger and Lady Tiger wins, I'm Matt Payton. You've been following Tiger basketball on the Campbellsville University Sports Network.